In the previous lecture, we started discussing about vectors and we have seen a basic introduction to what vectors are. Now in this lecture, we will discuss defining and initializing vectors. We will see the different ways in which we can define and initialize vectors. Now starting with the first one, we have the default initialization. Now in default initialization, it creates an empty vector of the specified type. And here we have the syntax. We specify the vector keyword followed by the type of the vector which is enclosed within angle brackets followed by the name of the vector. Now what this will do is it will create an empty vector of this specified type. Let's look at an example. So here for example we have specified the vector keyword followed by string within angle brackets and svec. So what this means is we are defining a vector of the string type and the name of the vector is svec. And here since we are not initializing it to any value, it would be an empty vector. Now next we have copying elements from another vector. Now this is another way of defining and initializing vector that is by copying the value of one vector to another vector. So let's look at the syntax here. Here we have vector and the type specified within angle brackets and then the name of the vector and within parentheses or round brackets we specify the name of the vector from which we are trying to copy the elements to this new vector. So basically what happens here is this vector v2 that we defined here would contain all the elements which are there in vector v1 which is a vector that already exists. And similarly we have this syntax which has the same meaning. Here we have vector and then the type specified within angle brackets and the name of the vector and we say equal to v1. So this also means the same thing. Whatever elements are there in v1 is copied to v2. Now let's see some examples here. Here we have a vector of the type integer and we call it myvec and we assign some integer values to this myvec. Let's say 1, 2, 3. And here we are defining a new vector called newvec which is also of the type integer and then within this parenthesis I specify myvec. Now what this means is we are copying all the elements of myvec into this new vector which is newvec. So we have applied this syntax in this example. Now next again we are defining a new vector called newvec1 and it is also of the type integer and we say it is equal to myvec. So again it means the same thing. We are copying all the elements of the vector myvec into newvec1 which is a new vector that we are defining. So this is the syntax that we applied in this example here. Now next here we have another example where we are defining a vector called svec of the type string and I say it is equal to myvec. Now this would throw an error. Why? Because as we can see this svec is of the type string but myvec as we can see is of the type integer. So we cannot copy the elements of myvec to svec because they are not of the same type. So whenever you are copying elements from one vector to another we have to make sure that the vectors are of the same type. Otherwise it would throw an error. Now next we have list initializing a vector. Now here what we do is we create a vector from a list of zero or more initial element values enclosed in curly braces. Now as you can see here these are the syntaxes. We specify a vector and then the type within angle brackets and here we have the name of the vector and within curly braces we specify the elements or the values that has to be contained within this vector v3. And similarly this is also the same kind of syntax. Here we use the equal to symbol. We say v3 equal to a, b, c within curly braces separated by commas. Now this curly braces is very important. You have to keep in mind that we have to use curly braces when we are list initializing a vector. If you use a different bracket other than curly braces then the meaning would change and it would give you unexpected results or would throw an error. So here are some examples. Here we are declaring a vector of the type string and the name of the vector is colors and I say it is equal to red, green and blue. So as we can see it is enclosed within curly braces and since they are strings we have to enclose each element or value within double inverted commas and each of the elements are separated by commas. So that is the right way of defining and initializing a list initialized vector. Now secondly if you see here 
I have an example which looks almost similar like the previous one, but I say that this is going to be an error. Now take a close look at this and try to identify what the error is. Now if you look closely, you can see that we have used parenthesis here. We already said that whenever we are list initializing a vector, we need to use curly braces. So if you use this kind of parenthesis, this would throw an error. So be very careful with the kind of brackets that we use when dealing with list initializing of a vector. Now next we have creating a specified number of elements. A vector can be initialized from a count and an element value and also sometimes we can omit the value and supply only a size. Now let's look at the syntax to make it clear. Here we say vector followed by the type within angle braces and then here we say v4 which is the name of the vector and within parenthesis I have two things here. First n comma val. Now n is the size or the count and then val is the value or the element value. So this means that there will be n number of this specific value stored in this vector v4. And here in this syntax what we see is we just say v4 and within parenthesis I say n. Now this n over here it specifies the count or the size. So here we see that we are not specifying the value. So we are omitting the value here and we are supplying only the size over here. Let's take some examples to make it clearer. So here in this example we have a vector of the type integer called myvec and here within parenthesis we say 5 comma minus 2. So what this means is that this 5 is the count or the size and this minus 2 specifies the value or the elements that are going to be contained in this vector. So basically what this means is there are going to be 5 integer elements and each of them is initialized to minus 2. That means we have minus 2 5 times stored in this vector called myvec. Now similarly here we are having a vector called svec of the type string and here we say 6 comma egg which is specified within double inverted commas. Now what this means is there are going to be 6 strings in this vector called svec and each of them is initialized to the value egg. So egg egg will be stored 6 times in this vector svec. Now next we have another example here where we have a vector called ivec of the type integer and I say it is equal to 12. So within parenthesis we just have a number here. So that means we have omitted the value and we are only supplying the size. It is this syntax that we are following here. So what this means is there are 12 integer elements in this vector ivec and since we have not specified what the value are for those elements they will all be initialized to 0. So we have 12 elements initialized to 0 in this vector ivec. Alright, so those are the ways in which we can define and initialize vectors. Now since we have seen the use of different types of brackets here, like for example the curly braces and then the parenthesis, and we see whenever we put some values inside those brackets, they mean different things. So let us take some examples to make ourselves thorough with the differences between list initializer or element count. So here firstly I have an example. We have a vector v1 of the type integer and within parenthesis or rounded brackets I specify 5. Now what this means is v1 has 5 elements and they are all initialized to 0 because we have not specified what value they would contain. So because it is rounded brackets, this 5 specifies the number or the count. Now next we have another integer vector v2 and here I have 5 which is enclosed within curly braces. Now when it is enclosed within curly braces, this means that this is an element inside this vector v2. So v2 has just one element here and what is that element? It is 5. The value 5 is stored in the vector v2. So notice a difference between these two examples. Now next we have another vector v3 of the type integer again and within rounded brackets we specify 5 comma 2. Now what this means is v3 has 5 elements and each of them is initialized with the value 2. That means 2 is stored 5 times inside v3. And next we have v4 which is also an integer vector and now we see 5 and 2 again but they are enclosed within curly braces. Now when they are enclosed within curly braces, what they mean 
they are actually a list initialization here that means the elements 5 and 2 are stored in v4 so v4 has just two elements with the values 5 and 2 now next we have a vector v5 which is of the type string and we see that within curly braces we have this value cup which is enclosed within double inverted commas again now what is this this is a list initialization so v5 has just one element and that element has the value cup 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 stored in it now next we have another vector of the type string which is called v6 and here you see that we have cup again which is enclosed within double inverted commas but we see that instead of curly braces it is using rounded brackets now this would throw an error because we cannot construct a vector from a string literal because if we are specifying rounded brackets here we should specify the size or the number of elements that would contain in this v6 just like we did over here but here instead of specifying a count we are trying to specify a string literal here so this vector cannot be constructed because we are using a string literal here which is enclosed within rounded brackets so i repeat be very careful with the type of brackets that you use now next in this example we have another vector v7 which is of the type string and within curly braces it is written 10 over here and here it says v7 has 10 default initialized elements now take a moment to pause and look at this and try to understand why this happened this way because here we see we are using curly braces now curly braces is supposed to denote that the elements inside this vector are actually the values or the elements that are contained in that vector but here that is not what happened we say that it is having 10 default initialized elements just as if we used a rounded bracket here now why this happened is because this is of the type string now if i were to store 10 as a string i should have specified this 10 within double inverted commas but we have just specified it like an integer 10 so what the compiler would do is it would try to first take it as a list initializer but it sees that it is not a string but it's an integer so it would try to initialize it in other ways that is possible so what is the way it is possible if this was a rounded bracket then it would mean that this v7 should contain 10 strings and it is initialized to some default value so the compiler chooses that option and here v7 has 10 default initialized elements so this is a little tricky one just take some time to listen to it and understand it again now finally we have this vector called v8 of the type string and here within curly braces it is written 10 comma and then within double inverted commas we have cup now what this means is this v8 would contain 10 elements and all of them would be initialized to the value cup cup so we see that these are the different ways in which we can differentiate between list initializer or element count so depending on the type of brackets that we use we see that they have different values and sometimes when we use the wrong type of bracket it would throw errors and sometimes in cases like this example we see how the compiler works in order to initialize it without causing errors all right so those were the ways in which we can define and initialize vectors I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.